The championship chase started so many months ago with 253 teams all pointing for this one night. The whistles, the injuries, the bad breaks, and the upsets took their toll on coaches' nerves and player dreams and reduced the number of hopefuls to 40. Within the last two weeks, only two teams have survived elimination. The Michigan State Spartans have arrived led by the magic of Irvin Johnson. A near legend in his home state of Michigan, the All-American sophomore controls the offense like no other guard in the game today. He's brought the Spartans this far. Now his final hurdle, Indiana State and the fabulous Larry Bird. A near unanimous pick as the nation's player of the year, Bird is a 6'9 scoring machine and a complete offensive wizard. It's Bird who stayed on an extra year at ISU in order to realize a dream. Tonight, that dream is within his mighty reach. The heartbroken have been left behind. Tonight, center stage belongs to the game's two most dazzling stars. It's the end of the line, showdown time for a whole season of effort. It's Johnson's magical hand at the controls of a high-powered offense against Larry Bird and an Indiana State dream that has been perfect through 33 games, eking out last-second wins against Arkansas and DePaul. Tonight, from Salt Lake City, the Michigan State Spartans and the Indiana State Sycamores in the 1979 finals of the National Collegiate Basketball Championship. NBC Sports presents the best in college basketball. Tonight, from Salt Lake City, Utah, it's the 1979 National Collegiate Basketball Championship. The fans have poured into Salt Lake City in record numbers and they are infected with basketball fever. After getting here however they could and sleeping wherever they could, they have turned out in force tonight to watch the stars come out. Those who believe in magic and those who appreciate the beauty of a rare bird have come to see basketball's best and witness the crowning of a new national champion. Who's going to win it? Let's share your feelings with our audience. Who do you pick? I think Michigan State's going to win it. I think they have more superior athletes, two great superstars to beat one great superstar. A vote from Billy Packer for the Big Ten champion Spartans. How about it, Al? Well, such a great game and two super teams. I got to say in my head, Michigan State's going to win, but in my heart, Indiana State. And of course, perhaps we've never seen a final game with two greater individual players than Larry Bird, the player of the year from Indiana State, and the magic man from East Lansing, Urban Johnson. For Michigan State University, wearing number 32 and forward, six feet seven inch tall, senior from Detroit, Michigan, Gregory Kelter. For Michigan State, wearing number 12 and forward, six foot four inch sophomore from Windsor, Ontario, Michael Berkovich. For Michigan State, wearing number 15 at center, six foot seven inch junior from St. Croix, Virgin Islands, Ron Charles. For Michigan State, wearing number 11 at guard, six foot two inch junior from St. Louis, Missouri, Terry Donnelly. And from Michigan State, wearing number 33 at guard, six foot eight inch sophomore from Lansing, Michigan, Urban Magic Johnson. Welcome, please, the head coach of the Sycamores, Bill Hodges. And a welcome, please, for the head coach of the Spartans, Judd Heathcote. Set the scene again. Indiana State, only the 10th team in history to enter the Final Four unbeaten. Michigan State, as the Spartans break their huddle, they started slowly, were five and four after their first nine games, then won 20 of their last 22. And they have two legitimate great players in Johnson and Kelcher, the all-time leading Michigan State scorer. Kelcher is the third man in the ring, and that might be the difference in this game. I think the real key for the fans early is to watch how Bill Hodges decides to match up. Gilbert 42, Kelser of Michigan State 32. They're both 6-7. Michigan State controls Donnelly in the backcourt. The key, many feel, to beating Michigan State is to take the early lead. I don't think Indiana State's going to be able to stay man to man. Michigan State will force him into his own. Ron Charles on a feed from Kelser ties it up. Watch 
vicious double stack down here for Larry Bird to try to get open early. Carl Nix, rebound Johnson, Magic Johnson with the ball. shooting from the floor and the free throw line leading by nine points as we open the second half same five players will start for each club that means that Irvin Johnson Greg Kelser with three fouls and Alex Gilbert of Indiana State also playing with three Kelser Gilbert jump it off they're both going to go upstairs on this Kelser got it in the first half Gilbert got it in that half but it went back to Johnson we introduce the players for you, Don Lee and Berkovich in the backcourt presently with Charles Johnson posting up and Kelser from Michigan State. Next and Reed, the guards for Indiana State, Bird, Wiley, Gilbert, the front line. Kelser, K hits it, danced at home. And of course, Miley in the particular, any kind of offensive structure they have, that's her. Terry Donnelly, that's how the game began, with a little left-hander hitting a jumper from the side. He has four points, one early in the game, one early in this half. There they are. And Kelser from behind the backboard nails one. Magic double team. There's the trap you were talking about, Al, but men are going to be open like Terry Donnelly. Here's the little guard, rarely shoots, averages five, six points a game, but when he's open, he's deadly. That's uh, basically the same play we saw before, man going up for the jumper. If he doesn't leave the floor, he's all right. 
Donnelly. Terry Donnelly hits again. The junior from St. Louis, Missouri, averaging six points a game, has eight tonight on four 15-footers. Great passing by Michigan State, and Conley is four for four. That's what makes the Magic so great. Instead of trying to penetrate in here when it's not available, hit the ball around to the free man. They're spreading out. They want to catch Greg Kelter with the ball, try to get oh. foul on third. Urban Johnson scores, and it's now 55-46, Michigan State. They're going to isolate Kelter. He'll take Bird. There he goes. But he got a kind of yeah. seven point Spartan lead. Trying to run out that clock now. And here goes Johnson. And the foul is on number 30 of Indiana State, Bob Heaton. He can't believe it. Good backdoor move. And it split out fairly well. And everybody expected Johnson to come to the ball. Goes backdoor. Here he is. Heaton waiting on him. When we get back to that call, Heaton inside with a left hand. And he gets it back. That was almost the kind of shot he beat Arkansas with. Gilbert inside. Great play by Johnson. He stole the ball. The magic man pulled out the rabbit. Long pass to Kelser. The coup de bras. Michigan State now starts to celebrate. Let's see if we can catch a smile, huh? Urban Johnson tacks on two more. He has 24. A reminder of our award ceremony following tonight. 12, 11. Well, oh, that read has hit three low. Oh, there's the pass. Look at Johnson. Oh, there's a foul. Oh! It's all over. Michigan State University. National champions, 1979. They chant that cry on every campus in every sport. Everyone wants to be number one. But only one can make it. And Larry Bird, a great star, congratulates the Vickers. Dick, I enjoyed working with you and Billy. They made a ball. Urban Johnson leads his Michigan State team to the final score, 75-64. The first ever national basketball championship for the Spartans of Michigan State. And Brian Gumbel has the game star and his head coach, Judd Heathcote. Thank you, Dick. I am with two very, very happy, happy people here, Magic and Judd. Magic, not only were you a leader on offense, I thought you did a great job on Larry Bird in the zone denying him the ball. Yes, uh, Coach uh, gave us a good game plan to go against Larry Bird. And all we had to do was go out and do it. And if we did it, he said we would win. That's what we've done. John, I know you didn't count on Larry Bird hitting as poorly from the field as he did. Were you surprised they didn't try to force the ball into him more? Well, I think that we had a man and a half on him, Brian, and uh, it was tough to get it in. I thought maybe they could have gone to him a little more, but I think they worked the ball. Hey, this was a tough, tough game for us. Uh, they gave us all we wanted, and we're just very, very happy to win. Were either of you surprised at how close the officials were calling the ball game early on? No. Well, I sure was, but maybe he wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't because uh, they wanted to set the tempo for the game and they didn't want it to get out of hand so you've seen them lose the rhythm a little bit at the 15 minute mark in the second in the second half when Kelser left the ball game he sat on the bench for seven minutes and uh, then you then you you got out scored 14 to 4 what happened well we might have uh, become a little too conservative and yet without Gregory in there we have a tough time running our offense so uh, we're just glad we could hang in there and the magic man was super as usual and kept us in there let me ask two final questions the rumors say that you've played your last college game and that you're heading away from Michigan State. You first. I can't really say, I, I haven't said that at all. Uh, everybody's just saying that. As far as I know right now, I'll be back. But, uh, you know, everybody got the rumor I'm leaving, but I haven't said that. John, how about you? Those are just rumors, Brian, just rumors. Right. Gentlemen, congratulations. Thank Super Bowl game. Thank you. That picture. Let's go back to Dick. Okay, Brian tells it all. You feel it. You feel it with him. He's a great competitor. You know, in Terre Haute, when I first met him, I said, Larry, wouldn't you rather lose a ball game before you go into the NCAA? He says, Coach, I don't want to lose any ball games. He's such a fierce competitor. He's a winner. 
Okay, let's recap it. Billy Packer, your impressions. I think it was an excellent basketball game. The zone by Michigan State was the key. You never could get an easy shot. So ends this classic in Salt Lake City, 15,410. See Michigan State University Spartans. Rally from a 5-4 season start, win 21 of their last 23, and take home the championship gun blood. For Brian Gumbel, Billy Packer, Al McGuire, Dick Enberg, good night from Salt Lake. Associate Director of Producer Kenneth Edmondson and the Associate Director Randy Warns. Feature Producer Don McGuire. Remember, Saturday, April 7th, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, Major League Baseball returns. Milwaukee at New York Yankees or Philadelphia visit St. Louis. Next Saturday at 3.30 and Sunday at 2, it's LPGA action with the top women golfers in the Kemper Open. And Sports World Sunday at 4 Eastern Time features the Golden Gloves Association of America Tournament of Champions. Now following local news, stay tuned for NBC News Special on the Egyptian, Israeli, Peace Treaty, and the Johnny Carson Show. Follows on NBC.